as alluded to before, we need to bring in the strain displacement relations to close the equation set. I'll consider the strain displacement relations for normal strain first and after that for shear strain. For normal strain, we look at a line. Um, let's say this is one of the edges of a little chunk of material that's in the shape of a box and it's aligned in the x direction. So this distance is delta x. And when you apply the load on the, on the bar, okay, um, each point gets displaced. So this point, and you know, we're looking at the displacement in the x direction. So this is, let's say, you know, this will displace by a distance u in the x direction. And this will displace by, uh, you know, some amount, and let's say that's u plus delta u. And we are really looking at the limit as, you know, delta x is uh, tends to zero. And after, so after the load is applied, that edge, its length has changed. Um, because this edge has moved by an amount delta u with respect to that edge. So its length becomes delta x plus delta u. Essentially, this point has moved here um, with respect to that. So this, the distance from this point to this point then becomes delta x plus delta u. The normal strain then, epsilon x, is the change in length by the original length. And then, you know, we write, we do the same trick again uh, as before, which is that, you know, we've done this in other contexts, which is we say, I can write this displacement in terms of that displacement using a Taylor series expansion. The Taylor series expansion is such a key idea, you know, when you're deriving these differential relations. So you write a Taylor series expansion for this in terms of this, and this is what I would get. I would get u plus the gradient in the x direction times that distance plus the second derivative, and so on. And since we're looking at the limit as delta x tends to zero, we'll say, hey, you know, I'll, I can knock off higher order terms. So terms of the order of delta x squared, and here I'll have terms of order of delta x cubed, and so on. So in that limit, then, delta u is just that, and delta u over delta x is just that derivative. So in the limit, which you know, this means that in the limit as delta x tends to zero, the normal strain is that gradient. That is a gradient of the displacement in the x direction, uh, and, and particularly the gradient in the x direction. And by a similar reasoning, um, I can write the, the, you know, an expression for the strain in the y direction, normal strain in the y direction, as the gradient of the v displacement, so that's a displacement in the y direction, to, uh, and you know, so that the gradient will be in the y direction. So you can, you know, think of that as as uh, complementary to that in a, in a similar fashion by analogous to that. And similarly for the normal strain in the in the z direction, and so that's going to be the displacement in the z direction. And so you get dw dz. So we get three equations that relate the normal s strains to the displacements. So I have one, two, three. But I also have three unknowns now, three new unknowns. Those are the displacements, um, u, v, and w. So to fully close the equation set, we need to bring in the strain displacement relations for the shear strains. By the way, when we, you know, these are the relations, answers, these three relations are the relations that answers will use when we are doing the bike crank and the, uh, the bolted flange examples. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the strain displacement relations for shear strains.